Hello today's video we have the following content. I man, short, rich, handsome, drug addict, collects taxes from prostitutes, never fought with the Japanese invaders, but is still a master. But if he is called I man, who would doubt his mastership? When it comes to Foshan, many people think of the Foshan Shadowly's kick, but few people know that Wing Chun is the most powerful Chinese Kung Fu in Foshan. In the history of Chinese Kung Fu, Shaolin, Wudang, and the and other schools are famous, and these schools have unique martial arts to teach. Wing Chun originated from southern Shaolin. The most widely accepted theory about the origin of Wing Chun is that Wing Chun was founded by Nun Wumi, and its name comes from the name of her apprentice. Nun Wumi saved a bullied woman at the foot of the mountain, and took her as a disciple and taught her martial arts. One day, Nun Wumi was teaching her apprentice, and suddenly saw a snake and a crane fighting, so she took her apprentice to watch. The snake was as flexible as a human hand and quickly dodged the crane's attack. The crane also changed its shape like a human elbow, attacking and blocking, and the two sides fought endlessly and more and more fiercely. At this time, Master Wumi suddenly thought, if the moves of the snake and the crane are used in martial arts, what kind of strong impact will it have? Later, Master Wumi integrated the scene of the snake and the crane fighting into a set of boxing techniques, and she also taught the set of boxing techniques to her apprentice Yan Yongchen, which was later famous in China and abroad. Wing Chun was originally created by a woman, so it is flexible and changeable, but no one expected that the boy who was only 1.65 meters tall would eventually spread Wing Chun all over the world. Wing Chun took root in Foshan with the flow of inheritors. In 1900, this boxing technique was passed to Chen Huishan, who also had a nickname called Zhao Tian Hua. In this year, he really met a rich man. Chen Huishan was 52 years old this year. He had been looking for money for half his life. Unexpectedly, he finally made money because of Wing Chun. In 1900, a family in Pitali, Chan Chen, Foshan was very generous and gave the largest ancestral hall in Pitali to Chen Huishan on the condition that he taught their youngest son Wing Chun. This statement makes sense, and many people think so. But this family let their children learn martial arts not for the purpose of taking the imperial examination, but for, why? It turned out that the youngest son was born weak and easily coughed and had a fever, and then he got a serious illness. He was seven years old, but he was as tall as a five-year-old child, which made his parents worried. For this reason, this wealthy family in Pedale ignored everything and sent him to a martial arts school, hoping that he would be healthy and grow up. When Chen Huishan first saw this child, he didn't think he had any hope, but who would have thought that this child who seemed to be unfavored by God would later rely on himself to pass on the mantle of Wing Chun. The seven-year-old boy first stepped into the world of martial arts. What he saw were cold wooden stakes, his senior brother who kept fighting with them with his hands and elbows, and the master who looked very serious. Come here. Chen Huishan called the boy to him. From today on, you will practice with this senior brother. Don't be lazy. This was the first sentence the master said to him, and the boy just kept it in mind. The senior brother led the boy through rows of wooden stakes taller than him, came to the stone pier, and told the boy, Today, practice horse stance first. The senior brother arranged it this way every day. The boy was tired of hearing the words practice horse stance. I thought he would find it boring and give up, but he persisted day by day. In fact, this arrangement was Chen Huishan's idea. He earned money himself. But he was unwilling to teach children who didn't like martial arts, but he didn't expect that the boy would bite his teeth and pass his test. Later, although Chen Huishan didn't say it, he still cared about this little apprentice. At the end of Chen Huishan's life, this seven-year-old boy became his last disciple. He taught him Wing Chun without reservation, but he died of illness before he retired. In the following time, the boy always remembered the master's teachings and never relaxed his martial arts practice. Eight years later, the boy's kung fu had already looked a bit like his master, but his father took him back to school to learn cultural knowledge. In 1908, the boy came to Hong Kong to study. He was alone and felt lonely. In addition, he was short, so the rich kids in the school always liked to bully him. However, no one expected that this weak boy had huge energy in his body. One day, the bully in the school bullied the boy and kept pushing him. Just when the boy was about to be bullied, he used a push-pull method that was sometimes far and sometimes close to knock down several hands that reached out to him. When everyone was dumbfounded, he said, I, Yi Juan, am the successor of Wing Chun. Then he left. Ip K1 is Ip Man. He was only 16 years old at the time, and his Wing Chun skills were not yet perfect. After the incident at school, 
Ip Man's love for martial arts was simply obsessive. Whenever he saw a Chinese with good kung fu, he had to compete with him. But he forgot that there are always people who are better than him. Once, Ip Man went to a store and felt that the boss's walking, raising his hands, and landing postures were all like a martial arts master. He thought that the boss might be a martial arts master hidden among the people. The boss went into the inner room, and Ip Man hurriedly chased him and detest him. As a result, every move of his was easily resolved by the opponent. Ip Man felt strange, who is this person? His name is Liang Bi, a fellow apprentice of Qin Huishan, and his father is Liang Zan. Hearing that it was his uncle, Ip Man swept away the haze of failure, happily praised his uncle again and again, and did not forget to serve tea with both hands. After coming to Hong Kong, Ip Man could no longer learn Wing Chun, but this time he met Liang Bi, as if it was destined. After thinking about it, Ip Man immediately worshipped Liang Bi as his teacher and began to seriously learn the essence of Wing Chun. Three years later, Ip Man returned from Liang Bi and became a true Wing Chun successor. Afterwards, he returned to Foshan according to his parents' wishes. Unexpectedly, the job his parents arranged for him was not opening a martial arts school as he had in mind, but collecting taxes in brothels. At that time, collecting taxes from prostitutes had a nice name, called Hua Donation Bureau. Ip Man's main job was to collect taxes. After the prostitutes paid the taxes, they could be open to the public. Ip Man's parents wanted him to have a proper job and marry a wife. So they found him this job and married Zhang Yongchen by the way. Zhang Yongchen was his successor and gave birth to seven children. Although only two sons and one daughter survived in the end, Zhang Yong could be regarded as doing his best for the Yi family. But how could the orders of parents and the words of matchmakers be better than meeting new friends in a foreign land? In 1938, Foshan fell to the Japanese invaders, and the Yi family was also ravaged by the Japanese invaders. The Yi family's century-old foundation was destroyed and Li Wen wandered for the rest of his life. Li Wen originally wanted to open a martial arts school with Kung Fu, but the Japanese targeted him and surrounded the small courtyard. Master Yi Wen, I heard that your Chinese Kung Fu is very powerful. We want you to tell our soldiers about it. A Japanese officer begged Yi Wen in stiff Chinese, but everyone could see that the Japanese were not please, but forcing. In many film and television dramas, Kung Fu superstars like Huo Yuan Jia and Chen Zhen used martial arts to suppress the arrogance of the Japanese, and there were many plots of fighting with Japanese soldiers in the ring, but Yi Wen did not accept it. In his heart, Chinese Kung Fu belongs to China and cannot be taught to the Japanese. Yi Wen also thought that no matter who wins or loses in the ring competition, the Japanese will not let him go, and the best way is to leave their sight. In 1949, with the help of his friends, Ip Man left Foshan and went to Hong Kong, parting with his wife and children. His wife Zhang Yongchen could not have expected that this farewell would become a farewell forever. Hong Kong used to be a very powerful place. After Ip Man arrived in Hong Kong, he met Liang Xiyang, the president of the Hong Kong Hotel Association, through a friend's introduction. Liang Xiyang not only had money and connections, but also loved martial arts. Liang Xiyang soon became Ip Man's apprentice and Ip Man also relied on him to gain a foothold in Hong Kong. Ip Man kept moving around in places such as Li Tat Street and Li Chang UK Estate in Kowloon, Hong Kong, opened several martial arts halls, and spread Wing Chun to various places in Hong Kong day and night. During that time, he kept communicating with his family, but a Shanghai woman appeared beside him. This woman's background was unclear, but she was always with Ip Man, and Ip Man later became addicted to opium because of her. Everyone around him advised him not to smoke, but how could opium be so easy to quit? Fortunately, although Ip Man was trapped by opium, his heart was still determined by martial arts. During the time in Hong Kong, Ip Man had been teaching his disciples martial arts. Even those who came with skills, Ip Man did not reject them. The famous Kung Fu superstar Bruce Lee is a typical example. Bruce Lee had learned Tai Chi before he became Ip Man's disciple. Later, Bruce Lee met a disciple of Ip Man by chance and the Wing Chun he used amazed Bruce Lee. So the next day, Bruce Lee went to Ip Man's house to become his disciple. After Ip Man knew that he had learned Tai Chi, he did not object, but let him continue to learn. But when Bruce Lee was taught for the first time, he misunderstood what Ip Man meant, thinking that Ip Man was only teaching him basic skills, so he left after only two days of learning. It was not until after Bruce Lee's death that he used the basic skills taught by his master again, and was surprised to find that Wing Chun was so profound. Later, Bruce Lee came back in disgrace and formally became Ip Man's disciple. 
After that, Bruce Lee never skipped classes. Although he went to the United States for his film career and did not complete his studies, he incorporated the Wing Chun he learned in the United States into his own boxing. When Bruce Lee wrote Kung Fu into the American Dictionary, Ip Man was still teaching boxing seriously in Hong Kong. As a result, Bruce Lee came back and wanted Ip Man to teach him all the wooden man methods of Wing Chun. However, Bruce Lee came here to finish filming and bring it back to the United States, not to stay. Chinese Kung Fu belongs to China, which is of great significance to Ip Man, so even if Bruce Lee uses a building to exchange it, Ip Man will not waver. In 1960, the news of Zhang Yongcheng's death came from Foshan, and Ip Man began to focus on his family. At this time, the woman in Shanghai had given birth to a son for him, but he still could not completely quit opium. So, Zhang Yongcheng's two sons went to Hong Kong in person, and finally met their father 13 years later. The father and son reunited, hugged and cried. Ip Man felt deeply guilty towards Zhang Zincheng and his children. Under the persuasion of his two sons, he finally quit opium. Ip Man's life was almost entirely about teaching and imparting knowledge. His most proud disciple was Liang Ting. Apart from Bruce Lee, Liang Ting was the best example of a disciple who surpassed his master. Wing Chun became more and more prosperous in his hands. There's even a saying in the industry praising Liang Ting, Wing Chun started with Yim Wing Chun, was completed by Liang Zan, passed on to Ip Man, and flourished with Liang Ting. It should be noted that although Ip Man sternly refused Bruce Lee to record a film, he still recorded a film demonstrating the wooden man method at Liang Ting's request when he was about to die. After that, Liang Ting became Ip Man's most recognized disciple. He brought the Wing Chun boxing in the movie as a course to the world stage, making Wing Chun boxing widely spread around the world and famous. Under his promotion, the number of Wing Chun disciples and disciples reached 2 million. But when it comes to Wing Chun, everyone thinks of the modest gentleman Ip Man who walked out of the streets of Kowloon. He is always so modest and introverted, showing the style of a master. Maybe the synonym of hero is perfect, maybe Ip Man is different from what we imagine, or maybe he is just an ordinary patriotic person. Regardless of whether he is like one against ten as movies and TV dramas, and no matter how disgraceful his life is, his contribution to Chinese Kung Fu and China's position in the world is unique. I tried to imagine the scene of the Chinese who was called the sick man of East Asia. An ordinary person like Ip Man can still lead the Chinese people to struggle for it in his own way in a special era. For such a person, we respect him as a master. What is the reason? Thank you for watching the video, please leave your opinion in the comments section. Don't forget to press the channel subscription button. If this is the first time you watch a video on the channel, 